scientific injection molding. Can injection molding really be a science? The answer is yes, if it follows the same physical laws as all other materials. Let me take you back to an earlier time when this re kind of research was being done. In the 1960s, Kodak had to mold to very close to precision a particular film cartridge. And they decided to do a study on the effect of each machine control on the properties of the part, primarily dimensions. In this study, they would measure the results of changing 15 molding machine variables, 15 controls, and determine, in this case, dimensional properties. They would change injection pressures and holding pressures and times, temperatures, and at the end, they expected to find out what machine controls they could use to control the dimensions. Well, the result of the study was that part dimensions were affected by first stage injection pressure, first stage time, second stage injection pressure, second stage time. Any of the barrel temperature zones could affect dimensions. The mold temperature could affect dimensions. The result was that of the 15 variables they adjusted, about 10 of them would affect part dimensions. The study was useless. They didn't know how the dimensions were being affected, by what. At around the same time, I was hired by General Motors to set up a training program and a research laboratory. And the purpose was, like the Kodak study, find out what control problems, what part dimensions were affected by what machine variables. I had set up machines with instruments on it, uh, molds with instruments, but I still didn't know how to uh, proceed. I too was going to try to measure the effects of 15 variables. I was talking to a vice president in General Motors and told him of this dilemma, actually of the complication. 15 controls I was going to change and I was going to find out which ones affected part properties. He kind of shook his head and said, he had never seen a process, no matter how complicated, that had more than four independent variables. He said, look for the four variables. Well, I decided that if plastics follow physical laws, they must be buried in the equations. There are only two equations that apply here. One, the equation of state, which relates pressure, specific volume and temperature, and the other, the flow equation. In those two equations, there are four variables, four basic variables. The pressure, the temperature, the flow rate, and the cooling rate. Those must be the variables that affect molded part property. Over a period of about three years, my students and I did tests, various machine controls, measure the properties of parts to see if those were the basic variables that affected any of the part properties we could measure. And they were. Now, in this study, I had one very good student who did an excellent job helping prove this theory, and it was Rod Grolo. You know that name if you are familiar with RJG Associates. Well, the theory was proved. Plastics do follow physical laws, and those are the basic variables that control the physical laws, control the, the uh, behavior of plastic. So what conclusions do you draw? Well, beyond that they follow physical laws, you would conclude that there are four basic variables, as we've described. So is injection molding a science? Yes, it is. If you make it a science, it follows physical laws. Next, you must apply that information to the molding floor. There are not four knobs on the molding machine labeled pressure, temperature, flow, and cooling. Instead, there are the, today the 15 or 20 control adjustments. So the problem then is to de determine how those variables, those machine variables, affect the four basic variables 
and then how the four basic variables affect the molded part properties. I'll go into this in greater detail in another session.